The game starts out and the idea is that nobody really has any clue on the mainland as to what's happened during the events of the film. Um, so you're sent in there uh, as part of a squad, um, as part of two squads in fact, that go into the different bases, the Norwegian and the uh, US base, to find out what happened during the film, um, see if there's any survivors and basically report back and with your findings. What have you got? One body, no survivors. The difference between this and other action games is really the trust and fear and the squad. Um, the fact that the squad members actually have intelligence, have emotions, um, can make their own minds up about things and can do things like they can refuse to take orders from you. Um, in extreme cases, they can kill you. Come on, Pierce. This is crazy. You're infected just like the rest. Um, they can kill themselves if they decide that the situation is untenable. Um, so really it comes down to your interaction with the team um, and how you, you deal with them to actually get through the game. There's 20 different levels in the game. Um, that's based around 10 different environments. Um, and the idea basically is that when you're done with a level, you're done with it. So it is quite linear. Um, but what you can do within those levels uh, is totally open and up to you. Um, again, it comes back to the squad thing where basically it's down to the way that you deal with the squad members and how much they help you as to how, how easy it's going to be to get through the levels. The squad is made up of three different character classes. Um, you've got a soldier, a medic and an engineer. Um, to start out with, you have one of each, um, and then as you go through the game, you'll lose different people, either by them not coming through into another level, um, or by them bursting out and becoming the thing, um, and you'll meet new people throughout the game as well. Now, each of the different classes have, um, have abilities that you don't have, so obviously Medic can heal people, um, so he's like a walking Medipack, he can heal everybody except himself. Um, the soldier is very, very good in combat, um, and there's quite a bit of combat in the game, so they're useful to have around. And the engineer is the, uh, the real crux character in the game. Um, they can fix things that are broken in the environment. Obviously, it's quite a broken down environment. Um, without them, you can't progress through the game. So you actually need all these guys to be able to get through. And you'll pick up different guys as you go through. There's around about 30 different characters in the game. Yeah, we mix the levels up, um, so some of the levels will be very, very squad-based. Um, you'll, you'll really be dealing with the team all the time. Um, some of them you might only have one squad member, and some of them you're completely on your own. So again, it's, it's trying to challenge the player by giving them lots of different situations and, and uh, just basically giving them different, different challenges all the way through. There's two different ways that you can interact with them. Um, the NPCs will they'll talk to you, so that's, that's the one way that they'll communicate with you, but they'll also have icons above their heads. Now, this tells you information like um, if they're getting scared, if they're starting to lose trust in you, things like this. It also communicates things like, um, I need ammunition, um, I'm low on health, uh, or I can fix that for you. Um, the first way of being able to deal with them is when they're displaying these icons, you can go up to them and then just hit a button and they'll automatically either receive ammunition or receive health or they'll go and fix something for you. The other way is through a menu system, um, which allows you to give them commands like follow, stay, go somewhere, um, take weapons, give weapons, things like that. For the trust side of things, it can be anything from giving a weapon to a, a player, uh, to an NPC, um, or taking a weapon away. Um, it can be things like taking part in combat or not taking part in combat. So if you leave all of your guys to go off and kill all the Thing Beasts and you hang back and don't do anything, then they're going to start wondering why you're not taking part in combat. Stay the hell away from me, I'm warning you. Similarly, if you take part in combat in front of them, then they'll see that you're shooting the Thing Beasts and their trust will go up. Um, fear basically is based around the environment, so if you walk into an area and it's very gory, um, then they're going to start getting scared. Um, so realistically, it's, it's, um, trust is down to your actions and fear is down to the environment. You can always go through into the menu and have a look on the screen and that will show you the, the squad members' trust and their fear. Um, trust is represented by a bar and the fear is represented by the way that they're looking around and how scared they are. 
Um, but within the game itself, you get some clues as to how the guys are feeling. Um, if somebody doesn't particularly trust you, they might uh, flip you the bird. Um, if they're getting very scared, they might do something like get down on their knees and pray, um, or they might wet themselves. Um, so basically it's a combination of um, looking on, on menu screens and looking at the guys throughout the game. There's three different uh, classes of thing beasts. There's the little guys um, who are sort of like heads with legs that are scuttling around. Um, there's guys who are a little bit bigger who we call walkers. Um, and then there's um, guys that are really, really big, which are basically the bosses. Um, now they appear in arenas, so you walk into the room, the door slams behind you and you're locked in there until you've killed the thing beast. Um, within those different three um, classes, there's then lots of other different versions of those. So there's, there's quite a wide variety of thing beasts that you'll meet throughout the game. The targeting system is based on auto-targeting, so um, at the start of the game you can decide how difficult you want that to be. So if you put it into the easy mode, then you have a very big cone in front of you. Um, anything that falls into that cone, you'll automatically target and the gun will follow them around. If they go out of that, that cone, then you need to turn around to actually look at them to sort of like keep on firing at them. Um, you also have the ability to go into first person as well so that you can shoot things in the environment and you can do pinpoint shooting as well. Like my dad always said, if you want a job done right, you gotta do it yourself.